Every popular internet browser today comes with a private mode for using the internet. Although these private modes might give you a sense of security when it comes to surfing the web, you might actually be surprised at what limited protection they actually offer. In this episode from Network From Home, I'm going to be breaking down what these private searching modes actually do and when you should use them in the first place. To make sure we're on the same page moving forward, I just want to call out that all of the major browsers call their private modes something differently. For example, Firefox calls it private mode, Microsoft Edge calls it in private browsing mode, and lastly, Google Chrome calls it incognito mode. Despite the different names of these private modes, they all do exactly the same thing. And I just want to be very clear, if I refer to incognito mode or private mode in the rest of this video, I'm referring to the umbrella of all of these private modes for these different browsers. You're in luck because we have a scorecard round today for these private browsing modes. What I'm going to do is I'm going to list off a functionality and then we're going to see if that private browsing mode either offers or does not offer that functionality. To start, does private mode hide your location when surfing the internet? Okay. How about making your browsing anonymous? In other words, does it hide your IP address? Okay. How about encrypting your traffic? Do private modes do that? Okay. Do they allow you to browse without cookies? And lastly, do these private modes allow you to use the internet without tracking on your internet searches? Okay, so overall that wasn't super convincing, but let's dive a little bit further into exactly the functionality that these private search modes offer. One of the things incognito mode does is it lets you browse without the use of cookies or tracking information. What does this mean for you? This basically means that every time you go to a website, it will be like you're going to that website for the first time. A good example here, and I'll bring it up to show you, is Amazon.com. Let me show you the difference between regular browsing mode and a private browsing mode. Okay, here's a regular browsing window for Google Chrome. Let's go to Amazon.com, you'll see what it looks like. Okay, as you can see on this page, pick up where you left off, keep shopping for, continue shopping for deals. As you can see here, related items to what you've viewed. Unsurprisingly, I've looked at some ethernet cables. Now let's see what it looks like with incognito mode. We're gonna open an incognito mode window. Now when we travel to amazon.com, first it's gonna make sure that I'm not a robot. So here's a little bit different experience right off the bat. And here we are, this is a very generic page. As you noticed, I'm not automatically logged in here. It's asking me to sign into my Amazon account. All of these suggestions are all very high level. They're not tailored to my particular search history, the things I've bought in the past. That's obviously another piece of incognito mode is that when you go to a website that you frequently go to, in regular browsing mode, it will automatically sign you into your account. When you're using incognito mode, it will not do that because it doesn't know who you are. So where might this tracking or lack of cookie information be useful? Well, for one, there's a lot of websites that have certain limits on the number of times you can use the site before you have to start paying for the service. For example, if a website says you can read three articles in a month before you have to start paying, what you could do is in your regular browsing mode, you could read three articles and then in private mode, you could read three more articles without having to pay. It's also useful if you need to do some research. For example, if I go into YouTube, if I go into other IT or networking channels or search for different topics of videos, I'll get to see what a regular user would see. I wouldn't get to see specific videos that are tailored to my previous search history. So it's useful in that regard as well. The other thing that incognito mode offers is that it doesn't collect your search history information on the particular device that you're using the browser. What I mean by that, let's go over to the regular window here that I had open. This is my normal private browser. If I go up here, I can select history. History. In here, you can see all the searches I did by date. You can see here are all the things that I looked at with this browser today. You can scroll down. You can even see previous days as well. So it will keep track of all of your internet search history. Whereas if you go over here, you go to your incognito browser. 
if you click on the same dots, come down to delete browsing data, all you have to do to delete data, close all incognito windows, this only affects incognito windows. By default, incognito mode does not keep track of your search history information. As soon as you close this window and close your incognito mode window, all of that information, all those searches will get removed from the history. There'll be no record that you went to them on this particular device. It's important to understand the distinction here that with incognito mode, it will remove your search history for that particular browser on that particular device. But with that said, it does not make you anonymous on the internet. Your administrator, if you're on a work network or a school network, they can still see all your traffic your internet service provider can still see every website you go to when you're in incognito mode. It's just that particular device, you won't have record that you went to that website. So how is this useful? It's useful to you if you have other family members or friends that use the same device as you, and you don't want any record of you going to these websites. For example, it's very useful around the holidays for me when I'm searching for gifts for my wife, if I use incognito mode, she won't be able to see the things that I searched for and give up any ideas that I might have for different gifts for her. Obviously, another use of this is if you're traveling to adult websites or you're searching for personal information, maybe you don't want anyone else that's using the device to see that you went to those sites. So incognito mode is useful there as well. It's also important to go more in depth about the things that incognito mode and private mode do not do. They don't hide your location, they don't hide your IP address, and they don't encrypt your traffic. So in reality, private modes don't really offer you that much more privacy when compared to regular browsing modes. It's only useful if someone else is using the same device and you don't want them to see that search history. It's important that you understand this up front so you don't have a false sense of security when you're using these incognito and private browsing modes. When you open these incognito mode windows, it tells you all this information right off the jump here, but most people don't take the time to read this information. So here it is. It's very important that you understand exactly what you're covered for here when you're using incognito mode, just so you don't do things that you think are anonymous, but they're really not. In order for you to get privacy and anonymity on the internet, you'll need to use something like a VPN, a virtual private network, or a specific internet browser like Tor that is made specifically for privacy and not being able to track your activity on the internet. You can also use a combination of both of these things depending upon your situation, but that's something that you'll wanna research if you're interested in privacy, anonymity, all the things we're talking about. If you have any questions about this information, please drop a comment below. If this video was insightful or useful for you, please give it a like. That way other people won't have misconceptions about incognito mode. If you like the type of content that I'm putting out on my channel, I invite you to subscribe. I'll have plenty more tips just like this one coming out in coming weeks here. And as always, thanks for checking out this episode from Network From Home, and we'll catch you on the next one.